Welcome, welcome, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world. I'd like to welcome you to the Medicine Wheel stage of the Earth Dance Co-Manifestable. My name is Kitty Wells, and I'm here with my co-hosts, Sandra Hay and Michael Gosney. And the Medicine Wheel, the Medicine Wheel is a circle of wholeness. It's a path with no beginning and no end. The idea goes back through the ages of all humanity to the most ancient pictograms on rocks and stones, Stonehenge and the Celtic rock circles, to the medicine mandalas of ancient India and Tibet, the I Ching of China, and of course, the Native Americans. These wheels speak to our interconnectedness and to our understanding of ourselves. And our medicine wheel, as we have thought of it, extends from our body, our mind, and our spirit through our plant and our animal allies. And it's fed by the sun, the soil, the water, as they, they merge the intelligence of plants and create the food we eat and the oxygen we breathe. It extends to the commons of life and it encompasses the societal realms where we seek truth and justice and to our most precious planet. And our medicine wheel is a fractal of nature and it is all part of the great earth dance, the dance we dance with the earth. And in this time of illusions and separateness that are creating so much crisis, we really are here to feed the field with wholeness and our reminder of our interconnectedness to each other. And we dedicate the medicine wheel to support our intentious, intentional conscious evolution as we move through life together. And we've manifested, co-manifested this medicine wheel with so many collaborators. I just want to thank everyone for being here. And Sandra will tell you a bit about how this medicine wheel stage came to be. Thank you. Thank you, Kitty. You look so beautiful. You look like you are the medicine woman of all, medicine goddess. Um, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Sandra Hay. I'm part of the Medicine Wheel and part of the Earth Dance team here today pre presenting this whole array of extraordinary speakers and musicians. And the Medicine Wheel, actually, um, when we first started this project, the world was in a very different place. It was about two months ago when we were all in lockdown and we weren't dealing with some of the crises that we're dealing with right now. And as things evolved and as the world got to be more contentious and things became more explosive, we realized we had to pivot, change our theme for what we were going to be developing in this medicine wheel and really deal with the reality that we're now all facing in our lives here, not only in America, but all over the world. We're dealing with forces that are very, very um, powerful, very complicated, and our job is to try to bring coherence into that and find a place of peace and harmony where we can really feed the field and open up our world to a transformation collectively together now. Sounds very, very erudite and very kind of out, um, cosmic. In truth, it really comes down to very fundamental elements and the medicine wheel represents those elements to us. We will, we will we'll be dealing with recognizing what are the issues that we're taking on right now. We have a panel led by um, Tayana David that's going to be extraordinary women who are on the front lines of major issues of environmental and social uh, injustice and um, racism. That's going to be an amazing experience to share their wisdom and their knowledge and their experience together. And then, we're, so that'll lay kind of what the groundwork looks like here on the planet right now. Next chapter we're going to move into is about transformative culture. It's kind it's of what really the groundwork what looks like. Do. 
here's the ways we can imagine, not to only imagine, but try new tools to actually construct a new field, a new model. Like a Buckminster Fuller said, what did he say? He said, build a new model, which makes the old model obsolete. So rather than revol revolting and protesting and all of those, our intention is to come together where we are really bringing our energies in a collective creative manifestation for manifesting a new world for ourselves. So we'll learn about transformative culture and all kinds of ideas and um, models that people um, on this panel who are extraordinary beings led by Michael Gazi um, will share different tools that we can use in our communities and in ourselves. And then in our third aspect of this um, medicine wheel, we're gonna bring it down to the personal. How do we take care from soul, from let's see, from soil to seed to soul? It's a tongue twister, but from soil to seed to soul. Uh, you get the concept, you know, it's from, from where do we come from our own personal care and our planetary care and how do we collectively take care of our mother earth listen to what she has to say nurture her as she nurtures us and step forward into a really um, transformative world and in that part of the panel we'll be dealing with regenerative agriculture with some amazing speakers jenny pell from maui where i live be speaking about our regenerative agricultural community here and um, dragonfly medicine from Oregon and, and all of the beauty that they have been gathering knowledge and, and experience over the last 20 years as, as they've been really cultivating this world of regenerative agriculture and regenerative community. So that's where we're heading. Yeah. And I'm gonna send it over to Michael. Well, just a couple more words and we'll get started here. I um, uh, do want to mention that uh, Linda Arnold, Diva Sonic, is going to give us a beautiful little uh, sound healing voice uh, workshop also here today on the Medicine Wheel stage. Uh, we will start at four o'clock our Deep Green uh, series of talks. And this is um, looking at cannabis as a amazing resource and also at the other um, psychedelic agents, uh, uh, plant teachers, and uh, overall resources that Mother Nature has provided for us, uh, uh, feeding us uh, um, from our basic essential bodily needs all the way uh, through to our spiritual uh, evolution. And so we've got some uh, amazing uh, speakers addressing these vital topics. Um, and uh, this is all adding up, you know, the, the, the rising consciousness of uh, an, an evolutionary shift, which we're all feeling. It's coming from all sides. Uh, the Black Lives Matters movement is just profound. It's an unprecedented moment, uh, this global awareness uh, that's rising. And uh, there are so many um, fantastic, meaningful projects that have been uh, ongoing for years. And now it's time to bring light to these many solutions and implement them, scale them up, and continue the work of uh, developing a world that works for all that's in sync with the planetary uh, biosphere. Uh, it's all really just a, a matter of unprecedented collaboration is what it gets down to, uh, starting with our personal growth, our social uh, evolution, but then the kinds of collaborations that really have not occurred before stand in front of us, tremendous opportunities. So we'll be touching on some of these themes today in the talk. But now I'd like to introduce Doug Ryle, who will give a little introduction to Vandana Shiva, who is just a remarkable figure. Uh, I like to call her the Rachel Carson of the 21st century. Uh, for those of you who are not aware of her work, you will, you will be now. Uh, but she is setting a fantastic example for what needs to be done. We need many more like her on the front lines. And um, so without further ado, I introduce Doug Ryle, the uh, Managing Director of Synergetic Press, who uh, facilitated uh, Bandana's presence with us here today. 
uh, Synergetic Press is publishing her new book, Reclaiming the Commons. And uh, so without further ado, I'll turn it over to Doug Ryle. Thanks to you and all the Earth Dance organizers for creating this outstanding event. Um, hello all, my name is Douglas Real, and I'm the Managing Director at Synergetic Press. It is my pleasure today to introduce our Medicine Wheel Stage keynote speaker, Vandana Shiva, but, but I'd like to take a moment and share a little bit about what our press is up to these days. Synergetic Press, based in London and Santa Fe, is dedicated to regenerative Drenative topics centered on three primary areas of focus, consciousness and psychedelics, sustainability and biospheric sciences, and cultural anthropology and social justice. Recent publications include Dennis McKenna's landmark ethnopharmacologic search for psychedelic drugs, Mike Crowley's deep exploration on the original forms of Amrita and Soma in his Secret Drugs of Buddhism, and just recently, a new edition of Life Under Glass, the story of the original enclosure of Biosphere 2 with updated information and the science on the science performed and reflections on the lessons learned for the stewardship of our shared planet. And when it comes to the stewardship of our planet, there are few more dedicated and outspoken defenders of Mother Earth than Vandana Shiva. For nearly 40 years, she has defended communities against corporate biopiracy and extractive, process, extractive practices, particularly in the global south. And her unitive vision of Earth as family positions a new worldview for us to rally to and to manifest together. She is the author of over 20 books and Synergetic Press is thrilled to be releasing her latest book, Reclaiming the Commons, Biodiversity, Traditional Knowledge and the Rights of Mother Earth next month. The book details her work over the years defending against the efforts to enclose the commons and offers a new paradigm centered on the rights of nature and our interconnectedness. And so without further ado, it is my great pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker, Dr. Vandana Shiva. Thank you very much, Doug. And thank you to Earth Dance. For me, life is about dancing with the earth, otherwise you're not living. And for me, the commons of life is both the consciousness that the earth is alive, that her biodiversity, the tapestry of her rich diversity, biological as well as cultural, weaves this commons. And just like if you cut a piece of cloth, and destroy its weave. When you cut the weave of the commons through enclosures, through privatization, through grabbing, through extractivism, through illusions of superiority and civilizing missions, which a few white men have allocated themselves through the past 500 years of history, and they continue to do it even now, this addiction to the illusion of separation and superiority is the addiction we need to deal with. And I hope festivals like Earth Dance contribute to a new consciousness, a new confidence among ordinary human beings that we are part of the earth, we are part of the commons. And therefore, every effort to protect the earth contributes to liberation of the human beings. Why do I talk about the illusion of separation, the illusion of superiority? Because we are part of the earth. All cultures of the world that have sustained themselves over thousands of years without destroying the earth, which supports them, recognize that we are part of the earth. We are not outside her, we are not above her, we are not her masters. This illusion of separation was necessary for creation of the narrative of mastery, of conquest, of colonization. But with it went the illusion of superiority. Not only are humans separate from the earth, but the human species is superior to other species. They call this anthropocentrism. Another problem, because we depend on all other species. 
If the trees weren't there, how would we be breathing? When you do deep breathing, pranayam, pran is life. That the breath weaves the commons of life. When you do pranayam, we say so hum. You are, therefore I am. But the you includes every other species. It includes all our ancestors. It includes all the human family far away who are shaping our lives. The illusion of separation and superiority go together and they turn the web of life which is multi-relational. It is complex. It is self-organized. Every part of that web organizes itself, not in isolation, but in interconnectedness. It knows exactly how to relate to the other. But when everyone does it with deep self-consciousness, then we have the whole web as a self-conscious web with nobody imposing in science now, we are talking about autopoiesis, self-making and self-writing and self-creation and the earth dance versus allopoiesis, the forcing, the forcing of colonialism, the forces of fascism, the forcing of the destructions of democracy. The web is horizontal. It has no hierarchies. The mammals might be bigger than the microbes, but they don't have a bigger right to life. The right to life is the same for all, independent of size, for humans, independent of the color of our skin, the most superficial part of the human being. It's the color of our skin, skin and how much it is pigmented. And yet colonialism takes this into a whole new bias, exclusion to be able to own some people with a dark skin. As slaves and from India, indentured labor. Um, no, we have the same blood running through our veins. We breathe the same oxygen that the trees give us. We eat food in diversity, but the nourishing qualities of food are the same. And our co-creators in this dance of food as the web of life are the same. They are the same soil organisms, billions and billions. They're the same trillions of gut microorganisms, 60 trillion of us. We are only 10% us. So this idea of separation is also not only civilizationally wrong, it's so scientifically wrong, given that in the last 10 years, contemporary science has started to catch up in biology with ancient knowledge. Because I'm born in India, I'm gifted, being surrounded by the civilizational gifts of India, the biodiversity of India. I grew up with my mother putting neem leaves in the wheat and putting neem leaves in our silk saris. And then I find in 94, they patented the neem, which is a natural pest control. I had started a campaign after Bhopal saying, no more Bhopals, no more pesticide killings. Let's plant neems, it doesn't kill anything. And uh, 10 years later, it's patented. So I fought that case 11 years. It is among the cases of biopiracy and enclosures of the biological and intellectual commons. Thousands. We have fought three, the patenting of neem, the patenting of ancient Indian wheat that does not contribute to gluten allergy. Everyone with an industrial diet is suffering from gluten allergies. The problem is not wheat. The problem is the way we have bred wheat for uniformity. And uniformity then becomes an assault on our gut microbiome. The case of Basmati, I'm from Dune Valley. I'm sitting here from my mother's cow shed and uh, returned here for the lockdown. We are famous for Basmati, the queen of aroma. A Texas company makes text. Uh, pirates are Basmati and calls it Texmati and patents it. Each of these cases we have fought. Each of these cases we have won. Neem 11 years, Basmati four years, and for the case of Monsanto patenting wheat, they, they walked away even before the challenge actually started because we had established this is total theft. So this is part of the enclosures of the commons of life. When you start enclosing the commons of biodiversity, you start enclosing the commons of uh, intellectual 
gifts. And because you've defined yourself as superior, you think it's your right to take the knowledge of indigenous cultures, evolved over thousands of years, of our grandmothers, of my mother, and claim it as your invention. So my, my journey for defending the commons of biodiversity, the commons of, uh, of knowledge, began when I was sitting in a room with the old chemical companies. I nicknamed for uh, ease of conversation instead of saying uh, Monsanto and Bayer and Syngenta and ChemChina and uh, Dow and DuPont. And earlier they used to be about 60 of them and then they merged and became four. But I think it's just easier to talk about what they do. They make poisons. So I just call them the poison cartel because they grew out of IG Farben, the cartel used in Hitler's Germany to kill people in concentration camps. So poison cartels sitting there and they're saying, we now will make money by taking patents on seed by claiming we have invented the seed and redefining it as a machine. And, uh, and then every peasant will have to buy our GMO seeds and we'll make an international law that will make seed saving illegal, which was the intellectual property agreement of WTO. I said, no, you don't invent the seed, you don't invent life. Life is evolution in freedom and continuity. And the seed is an embodiment of this evolution. It gives you a crop, you save some seeds, it gives you the next generation. For thousands of years, a seed can renew the continuity of life, the continuity of the commons. So I said, no, I won't let you get away with this new narrative of colonialism. I'm going to defend the seed, learn from the seed, make her my teacher. We've created 150 community seed banks all over India. Globally, we've created a seed freedom movement to stop laws on patenting. In India, I was very privileged to work with our parliament and our parliament said, plants, animals, and seeds are not human inventions. We are part of an earth family. Therefore, you cannot take a patent on this. And this is the law that I have had to use again and again and again when Monsanto claims monopoly uh, ownership through patents. The last time they were in the Supreme Court with me, Monsanto actually said, the seeds are an empty container in which we pour chemicals, which makes them come alive. That's the level of degradation of this mind. And as we are going through the Corona lockdown, I'm still keeping track of the enclosures of the commons of life. Yesterday, I read a piece, how in the name of defending the climate, my new favorite person, Bill Gates, has given huge amounts of money for making breast milk in a lab. Well, a breast milk is made in a breast. And this idea of artificial bioreactors, I have fought this 20 times over life, where Tracy, the sheep, and Dolly, the sheep, were defined as bioreactors. And, you know, I've done this work for so long, five decades, I smile and say, okay, there was a company in Edinburgh that said, sheep are just furry little factories, bioreactors, and we're going to genetically engineer them to make human protein. Well, that company is gone. Monsanto said they were the inventors of life. They've been bought out by Bayer. And I think if we continue the beautiful dance of life without giving and closing our minds, to the new enclosures. I've written about my five decades of my earth journey for this biodiversity day, which was on 22nd of May. Partly because I just wanted to go back and reflect on everything. A lot of it is in the book on reclaiming the commons that Doug mentioned that Synergetic Press is bringing out. In fact, they were going to wanting to bring out uh, you know, an Indian publisher wanted to bring out an update of a book called Enclosures of the Commons. And when I went back to it, it was 97. And so much had happened after that. So we rewrote it and updated it. And that updated volume with 9,000 biopiracy cases, but not just the cases of biopiracy, the cases of celebrating life in a richness of diversity, because diversity is a principle of life. Life under containment, life under concentration camps is based on the idea of uniformity. And then the idea of violence, that because you don't fit into my idea of a superior human being, you are inferior, I have the right to exterminate you. 
the way human beings were exterminated in the concentration camps are the way species are being exterminated through pesticides, through Roundup. Look at the monarch butterfly, less than 1% surviving because of Roundup killing the milkweed, because of spread of GMO soya. Then you now have another illusion fooling the world, again in the name of protecting the planet. All of the new colonization is in the name of protecting the planet. And this one is the impossible burger. A GMO soya based burger with then processed in the lab in Oakland, in California, with a genetically engineered yeast and artificial blood made in the lab to make it feel like meat. I said, if you're a vegetarian, eat plants, not plant based plants diversity of plants, go pluck the lettuce, go eat the carrot. Don't let your diet become GMO soya. It has destroyed the Amazon. It has destroyed Argentina. 123 million hectares of GMO soya. Is it feeding us? No, only 10% goes to feed humans. 90% goes to make biofuel and animal feed and, and put animals in factories. It's the feed industry that has created the factory farms because the subsidies were so high. So a very important place is to eat diversity. That's something I've learned in my 30, 40, 50 years journey, that the earth gives us diversity. The earth's dance is a dance of diversity. Our work is the work of cultivating diversity. Our health is eating diversity. The 60 trillion microbes in our gut each have a different diet. They can't be fooled by GMO soya. They can't be fooled by the idea that you can cheat on food. In nature, in the earth, there is no cheating. In false political narratives, there's a lot of cheating. On supermarket shelves, there's a lot of cheating with labeling. The latest patent that we all must rise against is in that reflections of my earth journey. It's been issued during the lockdown in March of this year. And interestingly, the pattern number, world pattern is 060606. And it is a Microsoft patent on mining our body activity and mining our brain functioning. To then be processed through absolutely giant sized servers and processors, which are energy guzzlers and will become the biggest contributors to greenhouse gases. Already the digital technologies are contributing 5% to climate change. But if everything was digitalized, can you imagine? But I want to give you the details of this patent. So they'll mine our bo body data, mine our minds, process it through algorithms which are going to define are we fit or unfit just like the victims in Hitler's concentration camps were assessed with being fit or unfit just like the civilizing civilizational narrative of colonizing indigenous cultures labeled us with a little bit of color as barbarians to be white is not to be civilized to be civilized is to hold the earth together, to hold the earth dance. To be civilized is to know we are part of one humanity. So the two big leaps we need to make in this decade that we have, and the decade that we have is a year 2020 to year 2030. The intergovernmental panel has warned that if we don't shift and continue business as usual, we will destroy the conditions of our life. Within a hundred years, humanity will be extinct like the 200 other species we drive to extinction every day. The, inter, uh, the in, uh, Convention on Biological Diversity has given the same warnings. And in their case, they're focusing a lot on, on land use, on pesticides, on, on the extinction crisis. We are in the sixth mass extinction and the human extinction is predictable if we go, keep going down this path of colonization, of enclosures, of monocultures, of superiority. We do have a chance to turn around by joining the dance of the earth, which is joining the reclaiming of the commons. 
And reclaiming of the commons means the commons is for all. It's for the microbe. And I totally disagree with this new vocabulary of war against microbes. Microbes are our next enemy. I have watched insects disappear as insects were made our enemies and pesticides were sprayed. As plants were make, made our enemy and weedicides were sprayed. Microbe, we are microbes. We are walking microbes. We are only 10% human cells. We can't declare a war against microbes. This narrow Cartesian mechanical mind, which only wants to extract the next set of profits, has already caused too much harm. And if we give them another decade, there'll be nothing left for humanity. The earth will find new ways to rejuvenate. She'll find new species to evolve. She can do without us. We can't do without the earth. And that's why we must dance with her. We must dance according to her laws. And that's the reason I talk about earth democracy, the rights of mother earth. Our rights flow from the earth. Our rights to food, water, breath are all gifts of the earth. And we have these gifts to the extent that we protect the rights of mother earth. I have over these years realized there's so much to learn from the earth, from her species, from the seed, from the soil, from the pollinators, from the bees. And therefore, very organically, an earth university has grown on the biodiversity conservation farm of Navdanya in Dehradun, in Dune Valley. And I hope some of you will be able to visit when the lockdown is lifted. I hope some of you will anyway buy the book which will tell you about my journey to defend the commons of the living biodiversity, the amazing knowledge tradition so that we can move out of the mechanical mind into the biodiversity of the mind. We can move out of violence and cruelty in the name of progress. And in the name of, you know, I just feel that the way these lockdowns have been managed is so violent of the 3.3 billion people, 1.9 billion, have lost work. Half of India has lost work. And in India, we say rosy, roti. The work you do every day is your bread. When you steal your work, you steal the bread. But because we are one humanity on one planet, no one set of human beings has the right to appropriate the bread and the life from other species and other human beings. This is why True democracy must now flourish. I celebrate the young people who are marching the streets for a new resurgence of a common humanity through diversity, for everyone who's respecting the rights of Mother Earth and realizing the rights of the predators, the exploiters, the colonizers cannot be the basis of the future of humanity. We need to write another narrative based on the rights of Mother Earth, one humanity sharing one common planet and taking care of her with our deepest love, with our deepest compassion and our deepest courage. Thank you. Wow. Okay, did everybody get all that? <laughs> <laughs> She's unbelievable. Um, I wanna encourage everybody to follow Vanana's work and if you look on Earth Dance TV, right above the video window, we have a button to contribute to our artists and speakers. And uh, we'd really like to see uh, our community support uh, Vandana's work because it is uh, vital right now. And she actually and her people are struggling like everyone uh, with the COVID uh, crisis. Um, so uh, we don't have a direct link uh, for her donations, but if you make a donation just to the Earth Dance uh, link there and indicate it's for her, we'll be getting it to her. 